friends, this is Dr. Diana as patient, and I am pretty ill. Can we talk about Diamox? Okay, Diamox. How much to take, side effects, and alkalinity. All disclaimers in place, okay? I cannot diagnose or treat you, certainly not over the internet. Your doctor should be able to work with you on this and ask them to do so closely, okay? I am fielding questions from doctors all around the world on this topic, and I will share with you what I've experienced as a patient, okay? Now, if anyone is familiar with acetazolamide, Diamox, it's eye doctors because we used it for pseudotumor cerebri or idiopathic intracranial hypertension, basically high intracranial pressure causing a change in the optic nerve. Now, 20 years ago, we prescribed two to 3,000 milligrams per day. Eeks! We monitored compliance by seeing if the patient was acidic. Kid you not. Now, fortunately, we've learned a lot since then. Now, we know to watch closely for two things. Work with your doctors, all right? One, your serum CO2 levels need to stay at or above 20 22. If they dip below 22, you're too acidic for Diamox to work well. See if you can get a standing order for this blood test so that you can check it every two weeks or so as you adjust your dosage, trying to find the best dosage for you. The best dosage is the lowest dose that eliminates your symptoms of high pressure, which include the headache at the base of your skull, radiating down your neck to the tops of your shoulders, dizziness and sometimes true vertigo, tinnitus that ringing in your ears, nausea, tremors, symptoms being worse with Valsalva that is straining like blowing up a balloon. Now in my personal experience, I had these symptoms, but I was also a flute player between hyperadrenergic crises for there for a while. I would start out playing without a tremor, and then when I stopped, I saw that my tremor was really bad. I suspected high pressure then, but what cinched it for me was when I started Florinef, which increases blood volume, right? Wow, my symptoms went through the roof. I knew without a doubt I was dealing with an increase in intracranial pressure. Took Diamox and my headache, neck ache of over two or three years went away overnight. So typically we'll take Diamox for a while and feel way better. And then the pressure starts to creep back in and we think we need more Diamox every day. Almost always, in my experience, <laughs> This is actually an increase in an acidity. Check your CO2 levels and find out. I got so good that I could tell if it dipped to 21, true story. My doctor allowed me to stop the blood work every two weeks at that point. So dosages, talk to your doctor. Everyone is different. Most doctors will advise you to stay on a three times per day dosing because Diamox wears off quickly. The slow re release Diamox, by the way, don't bother. It's not effective for us, nor for pseudotumor cerebri. The evening dose, hands down, is the most important dose, and that will usually be your largest dose. I hesitate to mention exact dosages, again, because everyone's so different, and your doctor will give you a place to start. I fiddled with my dose for about a year and a half or so before I settled on, drum roll, 125 milligrams in the morning, 125 milligrams in the early afternoon, and 250 milligrams at nighttime, but that's just me, okay? My son, when he was half my size, took at least that much, whereas my daughter, who is my size, took less than half of that dose. So she was much less affected than my son. Everyone is different, okay? Secondly, your doctor will want to monitor your potassium levels. Not a huge deal, but watch watch that occasionally. Mine went south at about month nine or so, and I've taken a prescription potassium supplement since then. Both of my kids still check out fine. So again, everyone's different. Now, regular aspirin use is usually contraindicated in Diamox, and if you take propranolol, acidity is even more of an issue. So Diamox is also a sulfa derivative, so caution if you have sulfa allergies. It may not mean that you can't take Diamox, however. One doctor I know performs a scratch test. Um, one puts them in the hospital for the afternoon, and another one just prescribes it. <laughs> this doctor pointed out that his patients have sent us fine and that he believes the concern with sulfa allergies with Diamox is overrated and many of us outgrow those allergies anyway. I can't tell you what to do, but there are no non-sulfa alternatives excepting IV mannitol, which is obviously not great for a long-term solution. So again, please work with your doctors on this, okay? 
So how do you stay alkaline? How do you keep your CO2 levels at 22 or above? Let's talk about that on the next video, shall we? Yeah. So until next time. Oh yes, this does has something to do with that. But until next time, still hugs to you all. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.